Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys an important middle game topic called strong side and weak side. This is gonna help you a lot in your middle game. This way you're gonna know exactly what to do to get a good attack. But before we get into that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more great chess videos. So let's take this position here. For example, this comes out of a, uh, not a stonewall Dutch, but a Dutch, um, and he just castled. Okay, so in the middle game, a lot of people don't know what to do when they start making moves over here, moves over here. They're all over their place. So what you want to do is just three steps. The first step is you want to think, where is my strong side? Where do I want to focus on? In general, that's going to be where his king is. Right now his king is on the king side, so we focus here. The king's in the center, we focus on the, the center. The king's on the queen side, we focus on the queen side. Um, so in this position, we have our strong side as the king side. The next step is you want to slowly or as fast as possible bring as many pieces over to this side of the board. Um, so you're going to see in the next couple moves how I do that. Now when you do this, you want to think almost four moves in advance. You don't want it to be like, okay, I'm going to go here and I'm going to go here and I'm going to go here. You want to think, okay, where are all my pieces eventually going to end up? I want to get this queen here or here. I want to think, double up these rooks and then I want to try to open up with like g5 or something. So let's see how I kind of developed here. I went queen e8, knight d2, uh, queen g6, pawn push. Now another thing here, in general, when you're attacking, you don't want to trade off pieces. Because if I trade here, I'm not losing anything, but it's going to make attacking harder. The more pieces I have, the more options I'm going to have to attack and checkmate my opponent. So here I go knight g5, and now the rooks come in. Rook f7, rook f8, and let's say, for example, queen h6. Now here... You've brought all your pieces over. Now what do you do? Now what you want to do is attack the weakness or try to get rid of the pawns. If you get, think about it this way. This is the president and these are their bodyguards. If you get rid of the bodyguards, it's going to be easier for you to checkmate or capture the president. Um, so let's see kind of what I do in this position. Oops, let me fix that. Okay, so I go F4, starting pushing my pawns. Bishop C8, so he blocks this diagonal, so I reroute the bishop over here looking at some point for some sacrifice on h3 or something. So queen h4, e5, rook f5. Now, I love the rook lift. I think rook lift is a very fun and easy way to attack, um, but it's only best when the center is close. So I go rook f5, and I'm trying to go rook h5. That way I can attack this pawn. So take, take, bishop e7, and I reroute again. Now, remember, you have time, but also attack as fast as possible. So you got to find that sweet spot, that balance, um, and that's when you get those perfect knockouts. So here, I go rook h6, and now it's already over. So h3, he creates a hook. A hook is a pawn that you can kind of use to open up the position. So here I take on h3, I sack, and then here is just uh, tactics time. So you just this is where all the puzzles that you do will come in handy. So check, take, take, and then g2, and that's just game over. So we're going to look at some more examples of the castle on the king's side, the castle on the queen's side. Remember, three steps. Uh, you find your strong side, you bring pieces over, and then you open up and target the weakness. All right, so here we have this position. My king is on e7, his king on, is on g1. So here, the strong side for me is going to be the queen side, because I have the open files and I have the c3 pawn. So remember, there was open up or attack the weakness. So here, for, our, or for my strong side, I'm going to attack the weakness. He's going to try to move his pieces over to my weak side, my king side, and try to attack me, checkmate me, win some material. So we'll see what happens. So I go bishop a4, um, rook c1, and now I'm going to bring both my rooks in and attack this weakness. So rook c7, rook c8, targeting this pawn, and he goes queen g4. Now remember, you don't completely ignore your weak side. If he attacks something that's important, I just go king f8. And now there's really nothing he can do to try to open up and attack my weak side. So knight h h4, I just take, take, here, queen b2, and this is game over. I, he has no attack. If I trade off, I have a winning endgame. I got two on one on the outside. Um, and black is going to go on to win this game. So strong side, weak side was my strong side was the queen side. I moved all my pieces over and I attacked the weakness and I broke through. All right, so this position, I've castled king side. He's quote unquote castled queen side. So here, my strong side is going to be the queen side and his strong side is going to be the king side. So now we're going to watch as I try to open up him and he tries to open up me. Remember, the, the number one way to open up your opponent is with pawns. So here, I'm going to go a6, king b2, and b5. Even sacrificing pawns is okay because it opens up files to your opponent's king. Like if he took here, if he went queen takes pawn, I'd go rook b8, and now he's in a line of fire, and he'll lose his queen. 
So he goes here. I go king over. He tries to sack a piece. Um, and I mean, this is a pretty interesting position. It's not like won or lost. So here, now I play some defense. Now here, I, I have to go h6, otherwise h5, um, and this bishop's going to run out of squares. So h6, I'm still defending, kind of ignoring this. And then I push here. Um, and the key is after push, now my rook comes in, and then queen c2 at some point is really, really dangerous. So this, I, I mean, I end up, he ends up bundling the rook, and then everything falls apart. But this is a more balanced, uh, a more interesting strong side versus weak side battle of me attacking over here, him trying to lock it up, and him attacking over here, and me trying to lock it up. And then I found a way to break through. All right, so this position is a pretty interesting position. You'll see this structure a lot, this Fian Shadow. You're going to see it in the King's Indian. You're going to see it in the Dragon. You're going to see it in the Perk, all these different openings. Um, normally, you don't see the pawns on d5. You see d6 and, and the pawn on e7. But you use the same idea to try to attack this position. So the key when they fee in shadow is open up the h file. So I go h4. Now, if he goes h5, remember, my goal is to open up my strong side. So I go g4. If he takes on g4, I'm going to go h5. And if he takes here, now it's starting to get really open. Rook takes, bishop h6, trade off this guardian bishop, and this king is very, very unsafe. So here, after h5, let's try to see what he does real quick. He goes e5, I take, take, bishop g4 is a good move, because if he takes here, I have the open g file, and this is very dangerous for him. So he, he bishop g4, bishop e2, and now he kind of tries to lock it up. So here, I'm trying, I get rid of his guardian bishop, he's trying to lock it up, I'm trying to open it up, and this is a good example of both sides really fighting, and trying to making it, trying to make it interesting, at least, and not just completely getting opened up and checkmated. So we'll look at one more example, and then you guys will be masters of strong side and weak side. All right, so for our last position, I am white against this guy. He played an ex oh, he played a Rosalimo. I played Rosalimo. We went to this variation. So remember, my strong side, where do I want to focus where his king is? His king is on uh, the king side, and he's Fianchetto. Now, I can't really go h4, h5 if we both castle king side. That only really works if my king's over here. So now what I do is I just bring my pieces over and get rid of his guardian bishop. Trading off these two bishops is a very important idea in attacking uh, the fianchetto. So queen h4. I go knight c3 first. I want to bring a couple pieces in. I don't want to attack with just the bishop. So b3 so there's no free pawn. c5. And now I go bishop h6. Now is the time to really get an attack going. So knight d4. I take, take, and go knight d5. He goes rook e8. And I think the best move is bishop takes g7 with the same idea. But I do it this way, knight f6 check, take, bishop takes g7, king takes, and now take on f6. Now, he, if he goes queen takes, I just take, take, and then take the rook, and I'm up in exchange. A good position there. If he goes king to g8, now I have queen h6, rook takes, rook takes, and now rook e8. And I have mated him on the strong side with just two pieces. Now, he could have gone king h8 and played a little bit better defense, I think, here. Uh, I think it's still supposed to be better for white, but now it's not so... Just completely game over, and that's why take on g7 first was better. Um, but it's all the same idea. So remember, you have your position out of the opening. Now you want to think, where is this king? How do I bring my pieces over there? So the king, the strong side, bring the pieces over, and then open up, attack the weakness, remove the bodyguards, and go for checkmate. If you guys try this, it will help your chess out a lot. Remember, if you play with no idea what's going on, chess is really hard. Anything can happen. But if you play with the direction, with a, a target, with a goal in mind, everything becomes easier, and that's the same thing in life. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, and hope you guys were entertained.